And just like we all thought, the Arizona Cardinals are four and four through week eight. I told you, I've been talking about it all the time. I have it. Let's discuss. You are locked on Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Lockdown Arizona Cardinals, hit that subscribe button, man. Turn notifications on. If you want to leave a review where you leave reviews for podcasts, cool. You know, I'm just happy that you're here. Uh, today's episode of Lockdown Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Now, very different conversations are had after every game this year. I said going into it, I mean, I've been in sports radio since 2010 in Phoenix. This is the eighth year I've hosted this podcast. I don't say that as a flex. I say that as this is the most excited I've been for an Arizona Cardinals team. And it has been wrenching. It has been exhilarating. And it has been everything in between. The one thing that we've been yearning for as pertaining to this damn team is any sort of semblance of consistency, any of it, give me 5% consistency because it hasn't been. It's been up and down and up and down and up and down. I tweeted out yesterday, this Arizona Cardinals offense is either top five or bottom five, depending on what series they're on the field. But what we saw yesterday was the beginning of a trend. It's not a coincidence. It's not a one-off. It's the beginning of a trend. This Arizona Cardinals team can come back from multiple scores and win football games. We've seen it thrice this year so far. Now, it's not what you subscribe to to win games. Obviously, you want to be blowing out teams more than having to wait to the last second to kick a last second field goal uh, up from the foot of a kicker who didn't have a job a month ago. But the Cardinals are able to come back and win games. That's not what has happened ever. <laughs> For this team in the last decade, like you don't, 2021, either they were ahead or they'd lose. 2022, before Kyler Murray tore his ACL, the comeback against the Raiders was just vintage Kyler Murray. It was a chef's kiss Kyler Murray uh, moment. And then last year was kind of, you know, whatever. They're able to come back and win games. Two of them on the road, both against teams that have way more developed rosters than they do in the 49ers and and, uh, and Dolphins. And the Chargers at home last week, two weeks ago. So the Cardinals go on the road on a short week after an impressive and emotional win at home where the defense gave up almost 400 yards but zero touchdowns and Chad Ryland kicked his second game-winning field goal in three weeks. Two is coming back. Tyreek Hill's happy. Jalen Waddle's happy. Devon H. and Raheem Most are absolute beasts. And they're down nine points with nine minutes to go after a first quarter of such crap on offense that you thought the, the Dolphins were going to beat them 40 to three. And then Kyler Murray leads them on a 73 yard drive. Another massive, two of them, massive third downs in crunch time. One was the same kind of route that, that Marvin Harrison Jr. ran against the 49ers to extend that final drive. And the second was third and four, Kyler Murray having the ball in his hands, making a defender miss, and getting a first down. Trey McBride, James Conner were starting to see, and it's not perfect yet. It's not even close to perfect yet because it's not his role yet. We're starting to see on these final drives, James Conner eat. This is the Laguerre Blunt role that I've been screaming for for the last three seasons where give younger running backs the run in the middle of the game. Have James Conner set the tone. Have him eat at the end. And we're starting to see it. All in all, what we saw yesterday was how great Kyler Murray can be. 
and it wasn't perfect. A couple really bad drives early on. But I think overarchingly, the Arizona Cardinals are on to something. Okay? They're on to something. And yes, I'm sorry that it may take more than two series for Kyler Murray and Marvin Harris Jr. to get on the same page. I'm sorry it may take longer than four or five games for Drew Petting to figure out how his run-first offense and Marvin Harrison Jr. can be married. It's not easy to just plop an elite wide receiver into a kind of mundane run-first offense. Like, and, and listen, he deserves whatever the opposite of Flowers is. <laughs> he deserves the vitriol. That, that has been coming through anti-Drew Petsing for a couple games this year. And he deserves it, okay? And what we saw yesterday was his the beginning of his evolution. That's what we saw yesterday. Because it wasn't so much the targets that he got. It wasn't so much the route tree that he ran. It was the time and the place of his targets that shows a longer lasting effect than what we saw in the Rams game. Four catches, 130 yards, two massive, massive touchdowns on broken plays. That's not sustainable. And we saw that. And we saw in Green Bay, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s, the, you know, he, he was uncomfortable. He was pouty-ish. And it's a, it's a collection of things. One, they weren't using him properly. Two, he had never faced this kind of coverage before in his life. And three, he's he failed for the first time in his life. And by failed, I mean he wasn't seven catches for 100 yards and a touchdown every game. The NFL is hard, especially when opposing defenses are targeting, bracketing coverage surrounding you. It's difficult. Plus, Trey McBride wasn't unlocked. Plus, the run game was struggling in Green Bay. It's like it was a collection of things. So what we saw yesterday with Kyler Murray as the head of it was the evolution of Drew Petzing as a play caller. It looked different. It was completely different. And I know there was a report that Kyler Murray went with Marvin Harrison Jr., watched film in the wide receiver room and said, what plays do you like to run? What routes do you like to run? Kyler Murray is an elite player. I'm sorry. You know, people don't think. Look at how bad offenses are across the landscape of the NFL. Honestly, look how many bad offenses there are. Kyler Murray is a top 12 quarterback. I'm sorry that you don't agree. Oh, he's only short on call of duty. Shut Stop it. Marvin Harrison Jr. is an elite talent who will be a very good two, maybe all pro wide receiver. We don't know yet. Obviously, he's played seven games. Seven games in like a tenth because he went out so quickly in the Green Bay game. That only takes you so far. The cohesion is what needs to be there. And we saw it was natural yesterday. It was natural. And that is something. On top of the trend of them being able to come back from multiple scores and win games. Those are things that were absent from this organization. Elite wide receiver one. The right play calling and a team that has the intestinal fortitude to be able to come back on the road and win games where if they lose those games, their season is all but lost. If they would have lost the 49ers game and lost the Dolphins game, we're looking at two and six, baby. We're looking at completely different things. Now, the Cardinals are atop the NFC, the NFC West through eight weeks, just like everybody had it. It was fun. It was fun. I really try to be level-headed during games, you know, because it's, you know, there's a lot going on. I was pretty much Tom Cruise standing on that damn couch screaming that he loved whoever, Katie Holmes or whoever it was. I was that level on that final drive. It was everything you wanted it to be. It was everything you wanted it to be. And it was perfect. And they won and the 49 and the, and the, the Seahawks lost. It's like, wait, I will, I will quote. My father, Michael Clancy, I do this once in a while. Do the right things. And good things happen. Not always, but the ball bounces your way more than it does it when you're trying to force things that are wrong. And the Cardinals are doing things the right way. Drew Petzing is evolving. We're going to talk so much more about this. All of it. But I feel like that word vomit that just came out of my mouth was polished enough. Was kind of the, the right synopsis for the high points from yesterday.
Now let's discuss Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's discuss him. It's going to be fascinating. Next, Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board, man. Uh, they help you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is also brought to you by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is the best place for daily fantasy sports, man. Over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Price Picks has, you know, they've made daily fantasy accessible to all. And all you do is pick more or less than their projected stats. You pick two to six players. You win up to 100 times your cheese, man. You can do an entry in less than 60 seconds. The app is clean. The website is clean. Like, it is wild how easy they make it and you're not playing against other people it's it's you against the stats and it's awesome and like deposits are easy they take apple pay withdrawals like say you know say you cash you can get your cash in your bank account in as quickly as 15 minutes it is i mean it makes everything so easy download the app today and use code locked on nfl to get 50 bucks instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup download the app today Use code locked on NFL to get 50 bucks instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. I'm juiced today, man. Like, it's. Oh. Other teams have experienced this so much, and we've been so. We've been so devoid of anything to root for when it comes to final possession. A lot of it has to do with Kyler Murray's play. Absolutely. Kyler Murray hasn't been great at either salting the game away when you're up with one possession. That was more in the Cliff Kingsbury era. And, you know, needing a touchdown and you have two and a half minutes left, you know, just it hasn't worked well for the Cardinals, you know, for the majority of the time. And with the infusion of Marvin Harrison Jr. and the proper usage of him that we've seen for a couple weeks this year, it's going to take longer than, than people expect. Like, I don't understand why people will say, oh, he's drafted number four overall. He needs 10 targets. Why? Why? He's played seven games, seven games in a tenth. The metric that, you, that people need to be looking at is wins and losses. And yeah, this offense hasn't looked great at times. Absolutely. And a lot of it is predicated upon the run game. Uh, James Conner, 20 for 50 last night or yesterday. It wasn't great. Kyler Murray threw for over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no sacks, no interceptions, no turnovers. It was great. And the beauty of it was it looked natural. That was beauty. The touchdown catch, stop it. Like that's his, that's the range for types of footballs that he can catch, get his feet or keister or knee or whatever in bounds and still hold on to the ball. It's like, just throw it up there, Marvel, go get it. So that's natural. Him running from right side of the field, dragging to the left or left, dragging to the right seems to be the preferred go get a touchdown route or go get a first down route. Now, teams are going to adapt to that at some point, but that's what we're seeing. And Kyler Murray throws a great timing ball down the field. And I'm not talking about 50-50 balls where it's like just throw it up and somebody go get it. Those were timing routes where Kyler Murray can get some air under the ball, doesn't have to have a lot of zip, even though he can zip it. He just throws it. He threw that to a spot. He threw that to out of bounds where Marvin had to catch it, but his feet were still in bounds. He threw that to a spot. When Marv was eight feet away, like it's something that looked like not only are these two elite NFL players, but the cohesion is beginning. And you can't fake that. We've seen it. 
And the play calling allows that as an option. We haven't seen that as much. I'm removing, again, I'm removing the, 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 uh, the Rams game. Those are two broken plays. Sure. Incredible plays made Marv with the, with the extension to score the touchdown, like on the touchdowns that were in, you know, there were actually on the plays called and not just him, you know, hoofing it upfield because, because the safety didn't have or a safety. There was no safety over the top and the cornerback lost leverage was they're all crossing routes. All of them where Kyler Murray can just drop it in the bucket. And that was a really tough throw by Kyler Murray. It was from the opposite hash. He threw to the long side of the field on the money on Jalen Ramsey for a touchdown where the Cardinals didn't have anything going offensively really at that point. So again, what Marvin Harrison Jr. did was look like an elite veteran wide receiver. Immediately. On the road where you needed a performance like that from him. And it was Kyler, it was Drew Petzing, and it was Marvin Harrison Jr. in the lab. You could tell that was a zero to one jump. And this isn't an overreaction or speaking in platitudes to what we witnessed on Sunday. You're starting to see a body of work through eight weeks. You know what looks bad. You know what looks good. You know what's not sustainable. And you know what is. What isn't sustainable is what we saw against the Rams. Plus, he didn't have a yard the rest of the game. I don't think – I know the game was out of reach, but still. And then you look at what happened uh, – you look at what happened against the Chargers. You look at what happened earlier in the year against the Lions where it's like he should be getting triple the amount of targets. And he doesn't ha- – it, it, it shouldn't it, – it, like success with this doesn't need to be gauged in target numbers. It's efficiency with the targets that he gets. It's it's controlling himself in the middle field. We saw that catch for a first down where he took a walloping, held onto the ball, got you know his bell rung, got back up. Next play, he caught every kind of ball yesterday. And I'll tell you, while and I've discussed this that like getting Trey McBride involved will make this easier naturally because. Any other production outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. will make Marvin Harrison Jr.'s job easy, like for now. And then next year, his job is going to be difficult every second, regardless of output elsewhere. If the Cardinals can have Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. connected for the next eight years, this is going to be a terror for opposing teams. Terror. Terror. And again, like what made Marv so great yesterday was the natural nature in which he played. He was in his element. They got him involved early a little bit. I think he only had one catch in the first quarter. Like, I I, I was screaming from the mountaintops. Throw a couple wide receiver screens. Who cares? Early in the game, just get his juices flowing. Throw a five-yard out. Just have him just see, have him see a couple go in. And who knows, maybe he could break one. And that sets up you know, a fake throw to him. And then you see Greg Dorch screaming down the seam on the other side of the field. Like you can use him as a decoy for sure, but you got to show why he's a decoy before you can use him as a decoy. You got to prove why he's so good that he can be used as a decoy. And they just think that on name alone and Drew Petsing's, you know, been the, been the, uh, he's been, you know, this is what he's done. It's like, he needs to produce before he can be looked at as a decoy, not just because he's, you know, the number four overall pick. Marv grew up yesterday. And this is not fake. This is not by happenstance. This is not by game flow. This is not because they were down nine points with nine minutes to go. This is because the work is continuing to be put in by Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Drew Petsing. It's going to, I don't like, just because Marv doesn't have a thousand yards receiving through eight weeks, like, oh no, they're not using him right. It's difficult to infuse a talent like his with a run first offense with two other weapons that are one and two on the pecking order. He's a rookie. Okay. That's not, and I said this before the season started. It's not always going to be the case, obviously. By week eight, week nine, week 10 is what I said. If he starts to emerge, he's going to be the one option. Trey McBride, I'm still trusting more than Marvin Harrison Jr. James Conner, I'm still trusting more than Marvin Harrison Jr. Because we've seen it. We saw it with Marv yesterday. If we continue to see it, the Cardinals have two very, very difficult defensive tasks 
in week nine and week 10 with the Bears and Jets. Luckily, they're both at home. The Jets, the, the Bears reeling after that Hail Mary. The Jets reeling because they're the Jets. If we see Marv elevate in these next two weeks, we're going to be having very different conversations after the bye week. And it doesn't matter if the Cardinals win or not. Specifically for him, these next two weeks will tell a lot after what we saw against the pass defense up until that point that was giving up, I think, less than 150 yards passing a game. Kyler Murray doubled that. Marv almost had that on his own. It's a beautiful thing to watch a young player and a quarterback who's trying to find himself with this new regime connecting in a natural and organic and because they bust their ass during practice and in the film room between game days way. We saw that. It was fantastic. There are a couple of things to work on. One's obvious. And then, uh, you know, there's another one that, that we'll discuss. I mean, this is going to be the shortest segment that I've had to do with this because of how great the Cardinals played uh, down the stretch yesterday. That's next. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. Um, Game Time app has a new thing called Game Time Picks that filters out all the fluff. So you can you see only incredible tickets on deals, everything like that. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Um, they have this all-in pricing toggle that allows you to, like, if you go into the app, you have to toggle this, but it shows you the final total while you're scrolling. So you don't have to do any math in your hand. Also, um, panoramic views from the seats. So it's like, hey, listen, I haven't sat in section 220 before. I'm going to click on that. And it shows you the vantage point, say it's a State Farm Stadium, shows you the vantage point from the seats before you buy the tickets. So it absolutely takes the guesswork out of buying those tickets. It's amazing. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONNFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N and L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. I mean... Yes, slow start. Yes, a couple offensive series early. Like, what are we doing here, guys? It was worrisome early, of course, because you can only react to the content that your eyeballs are viewing. So early, not great. Um, And it looked to be kind of a runaway, but Cardinals cut it 13-7 and a half, and people forget (laughs) Without the safety, the Cardinals don't win. One bad snap. Tua, I don't know why Tua can just just scoot, scoot, scoot that ball out of the back of the end zone. I thought that would have to be some sort of penalty. But Cardinals have to go for the Cardinals have to go for six if that safety doesn't happen, which is which is bananas. A um, couple things to work on. One, the pass rush is atrocious. <laughs> the pass rush is such a joke at this point. I mean, obviously injuries and things like that. Dennis Gardak, you want wish him a speedy recovery with his ACL tear. If he was out there, it would have been the same. Like Dennis Gardak is not an every down starter. He just isn't. And it's fine. He's been great for the Cardinals. And when they do infuse some talent, he's going to be able to be that situational pass rusher where he thrives. But he's just not it. So Zayvon Collins, have you seen him? Milk carton at this point. Um, pass rush is terrible. But. What's worse? And then, you know, we I have Donnie Druin from Sports Illustrated joining me tomorrow. We're going to talk more about the young corners. That was what I focused on uh, uh, on Friday's show. Uh, Garrett Williams played great. Max Melton got burned a couple times. There were a couple timing routes to Tua, or to Tyree Kill. It's like, ain't nobody, ain't nobody stopping that. It's not just because he's a rookie. So he did get burned a couple times. They were targeting him a couple times, which, um, you know, rightfully so. It, there's going to be some bumps and bruises. Cornerback is the toughest position to play, in my opinion, in football, outside of quarterback. Um, but they were fine. Like the secondary was fine. They were fine. Uh, the third down, uh, efficiency was, I don't think there's a word in the English language that could actually describe how bad it was. And the crazy part is, and I, and I've said this for, I mean, multiple weeks now. The longer the third down is to convert, the easier the the opposition has to convert it. 11 for 15. The Dolphins were. And there were multiple, multiple of the 15. 
third downs that were seven yards or more, six yards or more, third and longs, and a handful that were over 10 yards, a handful that were over eight yards. Like, it is unbelievable. And that's usually when you bring the noise. And the Cardinals just, you know, it's a silent film. Their pass rush is a silent film when you're trying to bring the noise. It's, it doesn't necessarily compute. That is something that, and I'll be doing, trust me, we're going to be talking trade deadline. It's uh, eight days away. Um, the New England's pass rusher got traded to the Chiefs for a sixth round pick today. So uh, I know that that was a darling name for some people, but the beauty of it was he only went for a sixth round pick. I think on Wednesday, I'm going to do the opening segment um, just about Monty and the options. And it's not options and names. It's putting into perspective. I was going to do a whole show on, this, show on this, but I think one segment's enough. We'll see. Putting into perspective how much ammo the Cardinals have right now to be able to go and make that splash, like, or multiple splashes. They could trade for anybody. Doesn't matter. Oh, on the trade on the trade block or not, they could trade for anybody. There's a lot of bad teams. If they wanted to trade for Miles Garrett and Max Crosby, they could. They could. So I'm going to do that in the next. So I mean, really, it's the pass rushes got awful, and third down, third down defense. What we saw inside 11 for 15 is unacceptable, especially with how far the Dolphins had to go for the majority of those third downs. It's like, oh, first down. Like, you could just tell. It's like, oh, wow. How are they going to do it? Let's see. What are they going to whip up this time? Oh, oh, seven-yard slant right across the middle, wide open. Yeah. Oh, two is having a tea party in the backfield. Yep, that checks out. So, regardless, Cardinals get a win, four and four. Uh, you'll take it. Alex Lancey locked on Cardinals. Donnie Drew in from Sports Illustrated with me tomorrow. Remember, without you, there is no. I'll talk to you tomorrow.